So welcome back to our dinosaur animation, part two now of this guide and walkthrough. And in the last video, of course, we, you know, saw all of the particulars ready to get started with animating our dinosaur. And so we're going to get to it right now. So I'm going to start out here right in the middle of a walk cycle, so to, so to speak, starting at what will be our contact position. And we're not going for anything too oversold or too strong, just a nice simple sort of walk. One thing to notice about my contact position, notice how the foot here is tilted up slightly, he's coming to contact on his tiptoe. Obviously this mesh is just a, you know, basic sort of block mesh. But if we imagine we've got the three-toed theropod, then this is when he's putting the toes down, ready to sort of spread his weight onto those three toes. So we'll go for a 12 frame cycle here. So I'm just going to come along 12 frames. Going to say that that is back at zero, of course, at this point. And we'll shift his hip here forwards so that that leading leg now looks like the rear one did. And of course, the rear one will bring forward here to also the contact position, getting a reach and angle on it more or less the same as we had back for this guy. So. And then another 12 frames later, we'll come out and, of course, just repeat that pose again. So we just take a look at that and see, of course, there's the basic, you know, foot movement of our cycle. Nothing too grand, but nothing too shabby either. Timing's OK. 12 frames. That's all right. Reasonably happy with that, I think. It probably wouldn't be too bad to actually have it even going slightly slower. So with that in mind, at this nice early stage where I've got very little keyed, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow this down a bit. Let's just give it the old playback to see what it's looking like. Right, I'm going to bring it out, let's say, two frames. And of course, the following key here by two frames. So that's now 14, one to the next. And that's not bad. I think I'm quite pleased with that. Don't really want him going much slower than this. So all in all, I'd say that I'm reasonably happy with that. Yeah, there we go. Nice sort of standard basic walk there. So let's start working in some of these details, shall we? Well, first thing can be this toe impact. We'll do a one, two frames to bring that down nice and flat. And of course, the same on the opposing side here. One, two frames, bring it down nice and flat. So that begins to give us his toe contact there. Right, the raising of this leg and the moving of it forward. What I'm going to do is delay that lift so it doesn't lift immediately there. Or at least I should say it doesn't start coming forward immediately. So I'll delay that, let's say, one, two, three frames. So let's just shuttle that along there. I'll also put a hold on it back at frame one for tidiness. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll hold you for three frames longer. So there we are, we're getting that sort of offset. The one foot is allowed to come down before the other one lifts off. Now this foot, even though it's not started to move forward for a couple of frames there, the toes will start to peel as he, you know, lifts himself off his toes and starts to push himself up. So at frame one, we will keep this toe controller nice and flat at zero. And one, two, three, so of course the last hold frame for the actual main foot control, We'll lift like this, so he started to produce that toe lift and peel and coming through like that. And of course, we'll do the same over on this side. So three frames after, where he's still on the hold point, we'll give the toes the peel action to lift them up like this. And let's take a look at how this appears. Aha, OK. Again, we see that idea of the, you know, fast out on the foot raising, the foot leaving. Um, of course, you know, these toes that are on the trailing, the rear leg, flick up nice and quickly as he pushes himself off there. So that's good. I like the timing on that. So let's work on the passing pose then. If we count at the minute, we see that we've got an 11 frame transition there. So let's say one, two, three, four, five. We'll lift that foot right up like this. 
we'll flop his toes back more so we've got that you know traditional looking toe flick down and we'll also adjust the knee controller so let's make sure that we've got it held of course i forgot to put a hold on that toe control so let's reset that there let's also hold the knee controller there we're going to want it to remain where it is at his contact point there and of course also resetting that toe flapper and then here at that midpoint we'll bring his knee up like this so he's really lifting that leg to pull it over and we're getting this action here take place let's just watch it on the one leg yep good raise flick raise and drop so let's go to our other leg and key off the same important point so we've got the last point of contact there where we want the toe flap and the knee held and of course we've got the point of contact which is here where we want them held and then one two three four five they each have a keyframe of course we want to get the main ik leg controller there lifted up let's just have a look at our other one how high did we lift it not so so high in fact about where we've got this one so that's good let's bring his knee control up there like this and let's do a little flap down on the toe and there we go that's our little cycle there so let's see it in completeness that'll be frames 1 through 28 center up on his hip and we can just watch it play over and over and i'm reasonably happy with that you might of course compare the action that's going on these legs to not too dissimilar to the rear legs on a horse and it's certainly a fair comparison and just with the you know basics that we've got keyed in here the appearance isn't that different and in fact all things considered the two really don't need to be that different they probably are very similar mechanically what we might have is we might say that well you know the hip sort of looks a bit lazy in a way so one thing that we can experiment with here is the z position of the hip so we can grab that and shift it forwards a little overblown on my screen here but let's just play it back whilst we're going see we can offset our hip like this which gives us a very different look when it's back here then it really is sort of rear end of horse but as we bring the hip further forward relative to the feet then we start to get more of this sense of you know his actual body type perhaps this is too far forwards he's not really moving fast enough he's you know in danger of falling over i think somewhere around here looks pretty good that's really starting to give him this more sort of dinosaur like posture to his walk of course remembering that he's got this big tail to counterbalance himself so having his upper body his chest head and neck pushed slightly forward here isn't such a big deal because of course the tail is a counterbalance so what else about the hip well let's look at it from the forward position shall we of course it's not slinking side to side at all at present and of course we ask ourselves should it well of course because of the way that the the dinosaur hip is it can't swing side to side very much at all maybe a tiny amount but of course this is one of the other implications of the way that the feet fall they are very central under the line of the body that means that even when one foot is up off the ground he's still got this base point right under the midpoint of his body so his hip doesn't need to slink side to side very much at all to keep him balanced of course it is possible that there could be a small amount of such shifting so we will put in just the tiniest little dodge and really really quite tiny little dodge and we'll do it right at the point where the trailing foot is hitting its highest point so a very tiny little side to side shifting of the hips there very very minor indeed and we can see that looks pretty decent there we go just that little little very slow very minor shift we can see as well when these feet are coming up to their high point in their crossover or their passing position we can push those ever so slightly sideways so that the action up to down is more in this line that the leg is making there 
perhaps we should turn on our show motion paths at this point as it helps us to really visualize that much more readily and easily there. We'll do the same, of course, for this leg here, get its upward motion to fall in line with the angle of the leg structure, the leg anatomy. And there we go. We're now getting this sort of a little cycle on our dino guy, which is starting to give us something that's pretty good looking. Since we're looking at the hip then, one of the things that we haven't taken into consideration thus far is of course the up and down motion of it. Nothing to get in the way of that. And so we should see a nice little bob coming along in this guy. He is of course, you know, still of a considerable size here. So we should expect to see some taking of weight. So what I'm gonna do is in these contact positions here where, you know, his legs are extended apart, I'm gonna bring him down some like this, give him a bit of a sink there. And I'll just do that on the other contact here. And of course, on the last contact point here. Let's just have a look to make sure that they're roughly equal in height, which they are more or less, just like that. There we go. And that leaves him then pushed up here on his passing poses. Then let's say one, two, three, after the touchdown of the toes here, obviously the toes bite into the deck and I'm gonna let his body weight sink just a little bit further as well. So we get the, you know, the down position, and then he crunches down some more as he takes the weight there, one, two, three. Bring him down just like this. And that gives us this little bob action like that, which really starts to help sell our motion now at this point. One thing I'd say that we can see since we've shifted his hips slightly forward of his feet positions is that the trailing foot there on both sides does suffer something of a snap. Obviously putting the hip down at the extension has helped that a bit, but it's still not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is this key that starts to pitch his toe up and roll it. I'm gonna extend that backwards by a whole three frames. So all the way here, perhaps even one more, four frames. So we'll do the same here for this one. So of course that's now starting to come up sooner. And of course, we want to correct the first frame here to put that in at about the same angle as it would be at had it been coming out of a cycle there. We can see that we're still getting a little bit of a snap there, but we can adjust that by changing the motion here of the knee control. So we see that it wants to be there at this point and that's all fine. But at this point here where we go for big extension, Let's bring it back as well so that puts the press into the knee and less so here on the ankle. And so that helps get rid of that nasty little snap that we have. So there we go, looking nice and smooth on the feet there, tying in with the hip well, and it's all working out pretty nicely. So what we'll do next is work some bob into the body here to you know carry this motion through but this is gonna be an overlapped motion and also a slightly balancing motion. So we'll actually run it counter to basically what's going on at the hips. So what we'll do is we'll find the old contact pose there, and that's the lowest point for the hips here. One frame after that, so overlapped, we'll have the body sort of pointing up a little bit, and we'll find the next low point for the hips, which is here, and one frame after, just rekey the body there. Obviously, same point in the cycle, but for the opposite side. Then we'll find the high point for the hips, which is here, and one frame after that, we'll bring the body down some, just a little like this. That way his body overlaps and sort of undulates against what his hip is doing. Sort of, basically, the attempt is to keep his head more or less level. As such, we'll come in and we'll animate the head and neck in a similar fashion. So we'll just dodge the neck slightly down there. This is, of course, in time with the body key. And we'll just raise the head a little to keep it flat. Come out to that equal point in the cycle and key them both there again. Then go back to the body in between 
This is where the body is down. Raise the neck up slightly, pitch the head down. And what we're getting is this little head bob. Perhaps in fact, at these two frames here, so the outer two there, the neck can actually come down more than it is. So we can just find those keys there in the graph and push them that way. Find the head, or rather find its pitch channel and push them this way to bring it back to level. And what we see we get is this little bounce through the body, neck and head that's coming from, of course, him taking the weight on his hip. Of course, the way it also works, you'll see, is as his body pushes forward, as he pushes himself off like this, and through his passing position, the head and neck are essentially crunching up. It's a bit of squash and stretch that we're getting on here. And of course, this is similar to the bird cycle, the way the bird's head bobs as it walks. We need, of course, to correct at the beginning and ends of this cycle. So here's the contact pose there, the point where the toes, the leading toes just touch down. So I'll grab the back, neck and head, grab the old animation toolbox here, and I'm just going to copy the pose there, come back to frame one and paste it. And then, of course, the same here at our last frame, 29 there, which is also contact pose for the other side. We can then get our passing pose pose, do the same thing, copy it there. Let's come across. Where's our passing pose here? There it is. And we paste that pose here, which is, of course, as we see one after the hip high maximum there. So if we just take a look at our whole cycle thus far, there we go. Got him wandering along, little bounce going on in the body, looks very nice and natural. The spine and into the head and neck overlaps the movement on the hips slightly, but obviously the head, neck and spine or chest at least all operate in time with one another. We can continue working on this whole body and head action in terms of the, you know, very small side to side motion that we've got going on here. Basically flexing our body a little bit to account for the small shift in the hip point. So let's take a look at those positions. Obviously, we've got the hip off to one side here and then off to the other over there, with it, of course, pretty much central on the contact points. So that's where we're going to work our spine, neck and head controllers in a similar fashion. So here we are, contact point, that's basically straight. We can, of course, get the heading keys and delete those ones that have been created since they're all held flat. And let's not forget to do the same on head and neck here. We've so far only used the pitch channels there. So we've got a contact here. And we've also got a contact there. So let's key them as they are. So of course they are remaining nice and straight. And we've also got a key here at 15, contact point. And here they want to remain straight. I'm just going to make sure that I only create a keyframe for the heading channel on these guys. So then our first extreme to the side, that's basically here. But of course, we've got a slight delay on the head, neck, spine part. So we'll come across to the key that we've already got for them here at frame 10. And I'll push the body ever so slightly this way. I'll take the neck and turn it in countenance to the turn of the body. So you've basically got this double offset for the spine and neck. They counteract one another's weave, as it were. And of course, we come to the other extreme point there on the body. We've got our key here for the neck and back, or the spine, I should say. We push it off now in this direction. And of course, take the neck and counter rotate it this way, trying to basically keep the head in a straight line. Subsequently, if we just grab our hip there and we follow along, there we see the little weave side to side that our head and neck is doing. It looks pretty good and natural. And there we see it coming in from the front, looking very nice indeed. We can add to this a little bit, give it just a little pop more life by using the hip roll controller here. Again, at the contact point where the body is straight, we'll keep it at zero like this and we'll do the same at that one where the body is of course straight and we'll find the other contact point which is here and key it there then we'll look for that extreme to the one side which is there and what we'll do is we'll weave this 
on these points with a slightly different dynamic to what we've got going on elsewhere because of course our contact is also our extreme point our extreme most stretched out position of the two legs so we'll do a very similar thing to what we saw with the other characters and creatures in so much that we'll twist the hip a little bit or turn it to allow more space for the rear leg and push the body slightly towards the leading leg and of course we'll alternate that for this contact point and also of course for that repeated contact point there and notice of course that the amount that I'm pushing it by is very minimal indeed of course because once again this represents a twisting and swinging around of the hips which as we already discussed is a bit of a no-no in this type of creature here we see it playing back and that's what it looks like next then we we'll want to work on the tail and the tail of course as a balancing aid this is going to swing back the other way like this and we're only going to swing from this top tail point we're not going to curl the entire tail so we're going to swing it that way ever so slightly just past the center line at this contact point there obviously keying it there and then at the opposing contact point which should be here yep right there we will swing it back just like so if we then look at the whole thing playing back we can see that we've got this subtle little weave on the body very gentle very steady not oversold at all and mostly of course as we see happening in the head and neck we've got this real balancing out of the head and neck going on there the rest of it is very soft very subtle not much movement at all in that sort of a fashion and so so far this is looking pretty good with the tail we will also of course have a bobbing up and down motion to work with the hips and the spine and everything else but we will do this in the same manner as we did on the quadruped so it won't act over a single left right left cycle it'll work over a double cycle of course there's no way of knowing whether this is right or wrong for a dinosaur but it is a tail action that you see repeated in a great many animals as such there's a reasonable suspicion that it might be the correct choice so we won't do that right now we'll come on to that once we've got a second cycle pair laid in otherwise the only thing left to do for this single cycle is to put a bit of action on the arms because at the minute he's just carrying them along there very straight and flat so we'll just grab our arm ik controllers and we're basically just going to create a little bob for them so key them there at 29 which is of course the same point in the cycle and what we're going to create for them is again an overlapped action so as his body starts to come down here at the impact just two frames after the contact we'll key them held and then one two three four we'll give them a little dip and drop like that so we're getting this little overlap bob of the arms we can come out to the other contact point which is where they're going to basically want to copy whatever the pose was there so let's just copy that and paste it in here and also as he goes up past and over his top point his high point of the hip there at the passing pose we'll just come one two frames after that and bring the arms into the up position here so there we've got that little natural overlapping bob there then for simplicity's sake we can just copy these motions three to frame 11 come out one two three frames and just paste it there and that gives us the same timing for the other side and so we watch that back and there we see the arms doing this little bob along obviously i've got a double frame there there we go clean that it goes into a nice clean cycle if we want to add a little bit of variation which is always a good thing then i'll just pull up the graphs i'll just pick one of the two arms there grab its y and z positions which of course are the ones that we're interested in here and i'm basically just gonna grab all of those and i'll shove it back a little bit there on the y and grab the z and move it just down a little bit there on the z so he doesn't have these perfectly twinned arms so that adds a little bit of asymmetry there to our character which is a bit more realistic a bit more natural 
okay so here's our cycle so far then i think it's looking pretty good we can check it out from other angles to see how it's playing make sure that we're happy with what we're seeing and what we're getting and i think that really it's you know looking quite nice i don't think that this is a unreasonable or particularly unrealistic sort of movement motion design to have for a dinosaur character of this ilk so with all of those basics laid in then we can go on to a bit of key or pose motion copying pasting what have you to get a second cycle in here so we've got a full two steps left right left right and that gives us our two cycle timing that we can begin to then work in the wag of the tail onto so first of all let's pop open the old graph editor here for that first tail controller which of course we already animated and let's just make sure to get rid of any pitch keyframes that were created there then how are we going to do this well let's set an initial sort of pitch i think something like this isn't in fairness to unrealistic maybe flex that a little bit let's bring that down a touch like that okay since we have the same pose here at the last obviously we'll just key them both like that as well so what are we going to do well we'll just run this a little bit counter to the hip there or rather just overlap it slightly so as we come down here the hip hits its base and starts to pop up so at this point i'll bring that down let's say something like this that of course is one two three four five frames after the contact so i want to go on not to the next contact but the contact after which is here so one two three four five six and we key it in essentially the same place then i'll come over to this contact here which is of course the opposing one from where we had it there and then one two three four five six i'll key it slightly up like this and of course we'll come to the equivalent here one two three four five six and key it up slightly like that and so what we get is this same sort of double bouncing action going on in the tail there very soft very subtle we can just have a look at its graph here okay and see that we just need to tweak those keys slightly there so that one becomes an up and that one's a down and this is starting to go back up again so let's set the angle something like that of course that would want to be more or less equal to it so that then gives us this cyclic action but that's taking place over two full steps rather than one step let's just zero in on our hip so that we can see it taking place and there it is let's do a similar thing then on the tip but let's overlap it just a little bit more so one two three four five six seven will allow that to flop down there come over to where that first tail controller was at its up go one frame over and raise that up come to where this hits its next down which is there bring this second tail controller down a little bit there actually i've got that 35 it should be at 36 because we're on a 14 frame cycle here and then again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen is where you're reaching your upward position again and coming through like this so there we see let's grab the hip our tail doing this two point bob as he walks along but of course with the single point side to side and that gives us an overall effect something like this of course the tail doesn't look very dynamic at all it looks you know really tightly sprung which of course is what we want this is a stiffened tail in a way because we're so used to seeing things like dogs tails and cats tails that curl and flap about this does start to look a little bit unnatural for us in a way it, you know it does look like it's too stiff like it should be flapping around more um, but of course it should not this is what we want this stiffened you know rod that is basically just coming out of his butt um, and making this little motion there 
what we do of course see if we look at it from the rear side let me just turn off the centralization there is that it's making this long form little you know oval shape down and up and round and round and down and up and so on like this so that's the basic movement that we're getting out of it and as we can see when we see it from this angle looking down the spine and into the head we can see what the intention really is here and how it is coming together so that's pretty good and certainly of course knowing that this tail should be stiffened that it should be like this wire rod that's just projecting out the back certainly this motion looks pretty good for something that is supposed to be that way so as we are here I can say that I think we're reasonably happy with it and with all that done it's really just a matter of more copying and pasting to extend our walk out even further just as we've done with you know quadruped before and biped before that and so on however we choose to do it motion copying just straight off animating it by hand it doesn't really matter so whilst that's all nice very pretty we've got ourselves a good decent dyno basic walk cycle here um, we are not going to stop there we will in fact do a little bit more to jazz this up some um, rather than just having ourselves yet another standard walk cycle animation let's try and take it a little bit further and get some sort of interest or excitement going on here we will however once again take a break for the minute and continue to do all such things in the next video